uh, uh, end with, with a brief reflection on how a Christian theological approach uh, might uh, approach the, the Darwinian questions, the Darwinian recipe. And this is only one of many possibilities that I think each one of us can undertake something uh, of our own in terms of a synthesis of faith and science. But when I think of Christianity, I think of the assumption that most Christian thinkers have made throughout the ages since biblical times that we should not think about God at all in a Christian context without, first of all, thinking about the man Jesus. And in an early Christian hymn interpolated into St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, we find some of the earliest Christian reflection on Jesus. They pictured him as being in the form of God, but not clinging to that status. He emptied himself, underwent, in Greek, a kenosis, and took on the form of a slave. And subsequent theological reflection, not all of it, but a great deal of it, especially in the last two centuries, has often reflected on this and come to the conclusion that what is really being emptied out is the very being of the infinite God, the infinite ground and depth of all existence. That's what's undergoing kenosis. Christianity believes in a self-emptying or kenotic deity. So when you approach from a Christian point of view this whole interesting phenomenon of evolution, or the natural world as a whole for that matter, we should ask in the light of the kenotic view of deity, what should we expect the world of creation to look like? Moltmann, whom I've just quoted, says that we should expect that even the creation of the world itself is not so much divine pyrotechnics as it's a consequence, the existence of the world is a consequence of a God who makes a space for something other than God to exist. A God who in our imperfect language, retracts, humbles, self-empties in order to make room for otherness. And the creation, the foundation of creation is this self-humbling, the self-giving of God. That would mean, therefore, that we should never be surprised in the light of this, or we should, never should have thought that creation would be instantaneously perfected because an instantaneously perfected creation would not be other than God. It would simply be an extension of God's own being. We should also, in the light of this understanding of God, expect that the creation would be given opportunity to become itself and that would, it would undergo a kind of evolutionary wandering around, experimenting on its own with different possibilities of being, some of which we label contingency, accident, randomness. And we shouldn't be surprised that this would take a long, long time so that our 30 volumes would, in the final analysis, perhaps be only the dawn of this self-becoming of the universe in the presence of a self-withdrawing God. In this view, therefore, divine providence and wisdom would mean God's concern for the independence of creation. What God wills, the theologian Wolfhart Pannenberg has often said, is the independence of creation. Just as God wills the freedom of each one of us, God wills a universe that gives rise to us in such a way that this universe itself has a kind of autonomy and spontaneity in it from the very beginning. We shouldn't therefore be surprised at evolution. 